Inspector Johns, this is Detective Lieutenant Lawrence. How do you do? I hope I'm happy to know you. You uh, put up the bail for your brother? Yes. Of course, you realize, Miss Gregor, that if your brother fails to show up for trial, you will forfeit the bail money. Inspector, Don is no criminal. Well, that'll be established later. He was carrying a gun. There are much worse crimes. Carrying a gun can be a dangerous business. So can building a skyscraper. Your brother had no license to carry that gun, Miss Gregor. It's against the law. right now. Now go on, get out of here before I have you put back in the cell. Don, there's been enough trouble. Let's go home. Uh, he's mixed up with Brady, all right. I stake my pension on that. It's too bad, too, his father being what he is. How can a great doctor have such a jerk for a son? The sins of the father? No, Dr. Gregor's a great man, both in his personal life and his business life. Sounds like a man I'd like to meet. <laughs> you probably will next time we pick up Don Gregor.
didn't say it, but change the word this time. The old record's getting a bit worn. Do you want me to repeat it for you word for word? Listen, sis, I'm over 21. I know what I'm doing. You know what you're doing. I wonder if you even realize what you're doing. I wonder if you realize how proud father would be of you if he knew. Oh, not that routine again. Do you know what it would do to him? Father doesn't know, and you won't tell him. No, I won't tell him. But he'll find out sooner or later. Probably later. Why are you taking that gun? Why, I might be walking down a dark street and a robber might jump at me. I want to be protected. I just paid a thousand dollars bail because you carried one of those things tonight. Well, sister, that was very sisterly of you. I know that gun is jail bait. Don? Again. Maybe you won't have to. I have other friends, you know. By that you mean Vic Brady. Maybe. Well, good evening, Don. Good night, Dad. Well, he was certainly in a rush. Don is all mixed up. He'll be all right. He had an, an engagement. Yeah, with Vic Brady. Marilyn, my dear, how would you like to fix me a little refreshment, huh? Sure, Dad. Ah, thank you. How did you know? Although I've never even met the gentleman, but Inspector John, he seems like a, a fan of mine. Well, this afternoon, we had a long telephone conversation earlier in the day. Well, here's a good drink for a parched throat. Hmm. You know, I had to perform a very difficult operation this morning, the victim of an automobile accident. You know that I had to remodel that patient's entire face, and it was strenuous and very, very complicated. Plastic surgery at times seems to me to be very, very complicated. Father, Don is... Yeah, the inspector thinks that Don is headed for serious trouble. But don't worry about that, because it'll all straighten itself out nicely. Don isn't really a bad boy. A little wild, perhaps, yes. Maybe I gave him too much in his youth. That plus the lack of a mother's attention. God rest her dear soul. But Don isn't really a bad boy. The Vic Brady is a hardened criminal. Yes, I know. He'll be the one to lead Don into that serious trouble that Inspector Johns is talking about. Perhaps. Perhaps not.
whiskey and soda. Well, I see you got out of that scrape, all right. No thanks to you. You left me holding a bag. I was carrying a gun and too close to the spot. So what? Nobody saw us pull the job. Besides, carrying a rod first offense ain't a tough rap to beat. I was lucky this time. Where's my cut? Not bad for a night's work, huh? Oh, the dough's good. You got rid of that stuff fast. It's the way I work, fast. They took my picture and fingerprints. So what? They've had my picture in the file so long it's getting moldy. If anybody sees me, they can identify me pretty quick now. So you'll just have to be real careful, like me. Carrying a rod now? Sure. Slip it to me quick. What? Don't argue. Do like I say. <laughs> you aren't very particular about the kind of customers you serve, are you, Jimmy? Since we're off duty officially, I guess a beer wouldn't hurt, eh, Bob? Sounds good to me. You know, this uh, fellow's face looks sort of familiar to me. Lay off me. Yeah, like we might have met him recently. What are you guys picking on me for? You're raising your voice. Cops all alike. Yeah, like crooks, they're all alike. On you to your grave. Yeah, we're trying to keep you from getting to your grave too early. Why are you following me? What makes you think you're so important we'd want to follow you? Your presence is enough. Oh, did you hear that, Bob? You know, I would have sworn that the license for this bar says that the public is invited. Oi, Jimmy, come on with those beers, will you? <laughs> yeah, here we are. You see, just a quick beer before going home to a well-earned night's rest. Why don't you beat it and leave me alone? I'm not doing anything. Too bad your father's such a fine man. He will leave my father out of this. Yeah, he's really a great guy. I wish he could be left out of it. I'm not responsible for bringing him in on this. You are. You know, you're a really pretty low character. Let him go. Go on, get out of here. You too. Go on, get moving. That's no way to talk to a cop, boy. You got a lot to learn. Oh, he made me sore. He was out to get you sore. Oh, forget the cop. Come on, we got work to do. Get him if it's the last thing I ever do. I said forget the cop. Let's go. Where to? What do you mean, where to? Just that, where to? The Monterey Theater, the payroll, remember? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Look, maybe we ought, ought to call it off this time. You ain't gonna chicken out on me, are you? But no, it isn't that. Oh, that cop has me riled. I might get trigger happy. So, maybe you'll have to get trigger happy. Witnesses can identify pictures, and the cops have both our mugs. I'm not going. Oh, yes, you are. There's 20 grand in that payroll, and I want my cut. You'll go, or I'll fix you, but good with the cops. Come on, get going. Maybe we should have followed him. Uh, Brady's an old hand at being tailed. I don't think it would have done much good. When do you see the doctor? Tomorrow morning at his office. I'd like to be there. You will be. somewhere with a gun. Oh, I know. I should have called the inspector and told him, but I... I just couldn't make up my mind to do it. I just can't see Don doing anything wrong. I just can't make up my mind to believe it. Where have I failed? You haven't failed, Dad. Words, my daughter. Just words. The proof is in the fact. Billy Green spending an evening in Maggie Murphy's home. 
And now, two quiet people, Cotton Watts and Chick. You know, Cotton, I'm making a picture called The Lion Tamer. The Lion Tamer? Uh -huh. Name of one kind of lion I'll mess with. What kind's that? Ooh, that's a dandy lion. <laughs> now, all I want you to do is meet me at the zoo in the morning at 9 o'clock. Yeah, with the rest of the monkeys. With the rest of the monkeys. Yeah, I'll bring my grandpa with me. I want to get a moving picture of you in the lion's cage. Well, if you ever do get a picture of me in the lion's cage, you'll be moving all right. Oh, Cotton, the lion can't hurt you. He can't hurt me. Now, nobody can make me hurt myself. Why, the lion's tame. He'll eat right off your hand. Eat off of your hand uh -huh. and over your leg, too. I know them cats. Uh, but you don't understand, Cotton. The lion was raised on milk. Raised on milk? Uh -huh. I was too, but I eat pork chops now. Why, well, he can't bite you. Now, how come he can't bite me? He hasn't got a tooth in his head. I know, but he can gum me to death. I don't want him gnawing on me. Now, all I want to do is snap you as you enter the lion's cage. You just want to snap me as I enter? Yes. Well, you better snap me as I enter, because you will never be able to focus me when I start out, cause I'm Alabama bound. Now listen carefully and there won't be any slip-up. The only one in there is a night watchman and he probably knows a safe combination. The payroll for a whole chain of theaters is in that safe. Calm down. Nerves can blow the whole show. Shoot first if I give the signal and ask questions later. All right, Brady. Let's get this over with. Check your gun first. Okay? Okay. Let's go. Save us a lot of time and trouble if you know the combination. What save? What combination? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't, huh? I think different life. You fellas better get out of here while you can. You're an awful dumb cop. This might sound corny, Pop, but I mean it. It's your life or the money in that safe. I don't know the combination. You know, Pop, there's always somebody trying to make my job a little tougher for me. That safe's gonna be open whether you open it or I have to use some juice on it. Your only choice is whether or not you're around to see it open. Doesn't make any difference to me one way or the other whether you live another day. It 
it's all up to you. If you're smart, you'll find out that combination before I count three. One. Two. Okay. You win. I think I got her, but we haven't got time to hang around and find out. Every cop in town will be here in a minute. Come on, get a move on. I said get a move on! Inspector? Oh, yeah. Messy things, these shootings. Stick around a couple of more years. A bullet makes things real rosy compared to other methods. Yeah, I guess you're right. But this is bad enough. You think she'll live? Oh, sure. The bullet hit her high and passed right on through. In a couple of days, she won't even remember the pain. Well, you should have been a doctor, not a cop. Two. 
Come with me. Take her away. Doctor? Sorry to get you up, Inspector. Well, that's all right. My job doesn't seem important to a lot of people, but <laughs> it's important to me. What's it all about? Robbery, attempted murder, and murder. How is she, Doc? Fainted. Just a flesh wound. More shock than anything. When can we talk to her? I suggest you wait until morning. She'll be up and around by then. More than I can say for the old boy back there. Dead? Couldn't be any deader. She saw the man, though. How do you know? She came too far a moment, mumbled it. See you later. Thanks, Doc. Where's the body, McCall? Back there. Right in there, Inspector. Get these people out of here. All right. Did you get a good shot? Fine. Take it to the office for the sunrise edition. Inspector playing hard to get these days? He's got a tough, thankless job on his hands. His publicity can get tough, too. Meaning? Meaning. I'm a newspaper woman. I'm here to cover a story. My people have a right to know this story. So tell it to them. How can I tell it to them when the inspector won't let me in the room or even talk to him? Now, maybe you could help me. Yeah, maybe I could. But the inspector said no story, at least not for now. But, honey... Please, lady. Oh. I'm on duty. Well, it looks like they got what they came after. Yeah, maybe they got more than they came after. I don't get you, inspector. Who is the girl? She's the secretary to the chain manager. She was checking the payroll list and knocking out some letters. That's why she was here so late tonight. The list had to be ready by morning for the payroll. She came in to check out with a night watchman and the boom was lowered on her. <sighs> Clean through the heart. Poor old Mac. Oh, you knew him? Yeah, he was on the force for 30 years. Retired last year. Got a little bored with nothing to do, so he took a job as a night watchman. Then that makes our hold-up boys cop killers. That's right, cop killers. You're joking. Does he look like I'm joking? Honey, that's bad business, cop killing. So what? They bleed like anybody else. Yeah, I know, honey, but... No buts about it. It's done and that's that. Besides, the chance I was recognized. Some dumb dame had to still be in the place. I think I got her. You think? It's what I said. Why didn't you make sure? Make sure. Make sure? With this idiot standing over a cop's corpse and his gun still smoking and the sirens blaring, any minute the place would be loaded with cops. You sound as crazy as he is. He wants to give himself up. He what? What do I have to do? Repeat myself all night? I said yeah, he... Yeah, yeah, I heard you. I heard you the first time. Yeah, stop gibbering. I gotta think. What are you going to do about it? Shut up. What do you think it is I want to think about? Vic! Vic, he's gone! <laughs> He got away. I can see that. I gotta get him before he can spill his story. You stay here. Stay here, he says. Where does he suppose I'd go dressed in this?
sure these are the two men? Yes, sir. Could you identify the men if you saw them again? Of course. Did you see the man who actually shot Mac? Yes, I, I did. Well, which one of these men did the shooting? This is the man. Don Gregor, I must ask you again. Did you actually see this man shoot Mac? Yes, sir. The other one was too busy shooting at me. Thanks for your help, Miss Willis. I'm only too glad to have been of any help at all. I, I wasn't very brave. I fainted early in the game. Uh, Bob, will you see that uh, Miss Willis gets safely home? Why, well, sure thing. Well, Miss Willis, I may have to call on you again later. Of course, I understand. I could see him right away. It's very important. Well, I think that can be arranged. We don't see you very much anymore, Don. I've been rather busy. Your son to see you, Dr. Gregor. Go right in. Come in, Don. Come in. What is it, son? I'm in trouble, Dad. You want to tell me about it? Has it to do with that uh, gun business last night? You know about that. Oh, yes. But I thought you'd get around to telling me about it yourself. Sooner or later. I wish it had been sooner. I'm in bad trouble. Well, the carrying of the gun can be taken care of. I'll vouch for you. It goes deeper now. I don't quite understand. I... I walked all last night and until tonight. I couldn't think straight. It wasn't until night came again that my brain cleared. Funny thing about remembering. You never remember the right things until it's too late. I lived my whole life in the last 24 hours. Oh. No, don't stop me, Dad. The life I relived wasn't very pleasant. Anyway, not for me. You and Sis, what I've done to you. But it's all over now. I, I killed a man last night. Why did you kill? I don't know. I don't know. Gun was in my hand. I pulled the trigger and the man was falling. Do you know who the man was? The night watchman. Dick Brady and I held up the Monterey Theater chain. A girl saw us. In the excitement, the night watchman went for his gun. After that, it was either him or me. Better it had been you. Now what will you do? I don't know. Brady wants to kill me, of that I'm sure. Maybe that would be best. It would be best if you turned yourself over to the police and told of this Brady. I've thought of that too. But, Dad, it was I did the shooting, not Vic. No matter what you've done, you're still my son. And if you'll turn yourself over to the police, I'll stand by you. But if you don't, 
I'll do everything in my power to see that you're apprehended. Yes, Miss Lytell. Inspector Johns and Lieutenant Lawrence to see you, Doctor. Oh, yes. Uh, tell them... Uh, tell them just a minute, please. The police are outside now. Dad, don't turn me now, please. You've got to help me. I'll go to them myself. They may help me later. But if they take me here... Please help me, Dad. Do you promise to turn yourself in if I don't do so now? Yes, Dad, I promise. Get into that back hall. I'll call you when they're gone. Miss Lytell, will you tell the inspector to come in, please? Thank you. You may go right in, gentlemen. Thank you, miss. You better stay here, McCall. Sure thing, Inspector. It's nice to meet you at last, Inspector. Won't you be seated, gentlemen? Thank you, Doctor. I'm uh, sorry this meeting couldn't be under different circumstances. Life is life. Many things are not of our choosing. But we must face that which is ordained us. Destiny is a strange and mysterious thing, my dear Inspector. You're here about my son. Yes, I am. He's killed a man. Oh, then you know it. Don has told me. He was here? Yes. Where is he now? He will be with you soon. He has promised to turn himself over to you, and I have promised to do all I can to help him. Of course you know that your son shot and killed a policeman. Yes. Sorry it had to happen, Doctor. Thank you. If you have nothing further to discuss with me, I'm afraid the strain has been a bit too much. Of course, I understand. Goodbye, Doctor. Thank you. Let's go, McCall. Thank you, miss. They're gone. Come on out, Don. I never thought carrying a gun would lead to this. Honest, Dad. You must remember your promise. I always thought I was tough. I'll remember the promise. I couldn't go on living with myself knowing what I've done. Goodbye, Dad. And thanks. You better go out the back door down into the alley. The darkness of the night will hide you for a while. Father's office. What now? When I know, I'll tell you. You're a fool. Maybe we're both fools. Twenty-three grand. That's how much of a fool I am. I'm getting out of here, Brady. You won't stop me. I'm gonna give myself up, and I advise you to do the same. They know it was us. Stand by for your regular nightly coverage of world news. We're cop killers. They don't like that. 
You killed that cop. Get that. You pulled the trigger, not me. You're the cop killer. The inspector was at my father's office while I was hiding there. He knows it was you and me. You didn't get that girl. She identified us. Guns and gunmen headline tonight's news. The citywide hunt continued for the two men who shot and killed Paul McKenna, night watchman of the Monterey Theater chain. McKenna was killed during a holdup which netted the killers nearly $25,000 in the 12 theater chain payroll money. The two men have been identified by eyewitnesses as being Vic Brady, a petty gangster, and Don Greger, son of the world-famous plastic surgeon Dr. Boris Greger. It has been established that Don Greger did the actual pulling of the trigger that sent McKenna, a retired police officer, to his death. See? You're the cop killer. You won't go to the police. You'd burn. Maybe you're right. I've been in nothing but trouble most of my life. I don't know why I joined you. Money. My father would have been glad to give me anything I wanted. I don't know. Maybe for thrills. But I'm through hurting people, Vic. Too bad I have to talk against you. I don't want to. They have you dead to rights anyway. Don't you see, Vic? I've got to get this thing off my mind. Sure, I'll burn. I never thought it'd lead to this. Don. You're not going any place. Shots will bring the cops down here. Ah, this time of night, people just think it's a car backfiring. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have let him go to the cops. Maybe I should have let him put my neck in the noose. Maybe I should give you what I just gave him. Oh, Vic, honey, I'm with you all the way. What are you going to do with him? Yeah, get rid of him, of course. Where? The river. Where else? Now? You're a dumb dame. Later tonight. I don't like dead men cluttering up my place. I want him out of here. You better shut that trap of yours or you'll be joining him. So you close this mob, so what? They know you were in on the theater job. You're as good as caught right now and with an extra murder to your credit. Ah, oh, quit needling me. You're just no good. For me, for yourself, or anybody else. That's it, Dick. Destroy everything and everybody. It's your style. Face it, Vic. You're as finished as the kid is. I wasn't in on your job. I'm not in trouble. Why should I stick around and take what's left? What is left? A has-been with a gun. A has-been? Baby, I've only just begun. I didn't set you up in all this luxury just to have you walk out on me. I pulled you out of that Main Street dive and made something out of you. No, you're not gonna walk out on me. Try it and I swear you'll never walk out on anyone again. So if they do pick me up, it's only a robbery rap. I didn't kill that cop. Nobody will know about the kid there. That's better, baby. I knew you wouldn't walk out on me. 
Oh, Vic, honey, what are we going to do? I don't want you to go to jail. I ain't going to jail. How can you be so sure? Some will turn up. It always does. Too bad your face is in their files. Vic, Vic, what is it? You hit it, baby. You hit the solution right on the head. My face. I couldn't find him anywhere. He didn't keep his promise to you. What he must be going through. Don wouldn't lie to me about a thing like this. He left my office to give himself up. And unless he has been forcibly detained, he would have done so. I looked everywhere I ever heard him mention. No one has seen him today. Only I knew where Vic Brady lived. He won't be showing his face around here either. The inspector may take me. He knows that I helped Don this morning, and he wasn't happy about my actions. Maybe if I talk to the inspector. No, that's no good. Because as he said to me, I am an accessory after the fact. But, but your practice. It'll be ruined. Oh, Don, Don. How could he do such a thing? My life means little to me now. It's Don that we must think of. He didn't think much of us. But we must think of him. <clears throat> yes? Yes, this is Dr. Gregor. Who? Yes, yes, I understand. I... But I must have assistance. This thing is a physical impossibility to do by myself. I... All right. Seven o'clock this evening. Yes. Yes, yes. Goodbye. Who was it, Father? That's Brady. He's got Don. He gave me an address. I have to be there at seven o'clock this evening. I'm going to call Inspector Johns no, right away. No, no. Brady says he'll kill Don if we notify the police. So this time we've got to play the game his way. Marilyn. Do you remember your nurse's training? Bob, why don't you do your shaving at home? Well, I've been home long enough to do it. <laughs> you got a point there. There he was, Inspector. Right in our hands, we didn't get him. Uh, I think the doctor was only doing what he thought was right. You gonna bring him in? Well, perhaps later. He's not the type to run out. Have you found out anything more about where Brady is staying? Yeah, he hasn't been back to his apartment in three days. So. I got some men stationed around there and some others following up some new leads. He's covered his tracks pretty well. Well, what about the woman angle? If there is one, he's kept it pretty far in the background. It isn't going to be as easy as we think. Well, I didn't think it was going to be easy. Bob, since uh, it's nighttime and uh, technically you're off duty, why don't you hop in that new used car of yours and take a run out to the Gregor home? You know, she's a mighty pretty girl. Funny you mention it, I was just thinking about it. <laughs> Mental telepathy. Go on, get out there and have a look around. You think he might be hiding out there? Oh, he's too smart for that, but he might try to contact them. I'm sure the doctor will tell you if he has. And uh, as I said, she's a mighty pretty girl. Blonde's a voice in my weakness. <laughs> Go on, get started. And uh, Bob, being a pretty girl, don't take any chances. Don Gregor is a killer. OK, Inspector. Lieutenant Lawrence. I just thought I'd drop by. Have you heard from Don? We'd have called you if we had. Well, do you mind if I stop in a minute? As a matter of fact, I do mind. I have to go out and I'm already late. 
Well, that's too bad. I thought I could be of some help. Help? By involving my father in this? Miss Gregor, if you just stop to realize, you'd see that it wasn't the police that's involving your father. Good night, Lieutenant Lawrence. No. Are we ready? Yes. Oh, I forgot in my purse. You go ahead to the car, Father. I'll be right along. Right. This is Dr. Grigger. Oh, come in. I thought I told you to come alone. My daughter is a nurse. I need her assistance. Okay. But I don't like my orders disobeyed. My daughter is just as concerned over the life of my son as I am. I need trained assistance. My daughter is that assistant. And if it's going to be done, she will help. If not, then your life is in your own hands. Oh, come on, Vic. Calm down. She's his sister. She's not going to do anything out of line. Yeah, maybe you're right. Sure I am. Shut up, you. Okay, Doc. What do we do? I'll show you. Take off your shirt and your shoes and stretch out on this couch. You know, this can be a very dangerous operation, done in such a crude manner. Doc, I've got little chance this way. I got a better chance the other. You're gonna give me a completely new face. With a new face, nobody could ever identify me as having been near that theater. It'll be like a new life to me. So let's get going. What do I do? All right. What's that for? To put you to sleep. I'm ready for your tricks. Well, you couldn't withstand the pain or stay rigid as you must if you were awake. Oh, Vic, honey, do what the doctor says. Shut up, you. Okay. So I gotta go to sleep. Keep the gun on him. One false move and you let him have it. Get me? Yeah, yeah. Sure thing. You'll be all right. I'll see to that. You hear that, Doc? She'll do it, too. Further than that, you don't know where your son is. I do. If those that are holding him don't hear from me by morning, you'll never see him alive again. I understand. And I promise you that no harm will befall you if you will do as I tell you. And, Doc, 
don't forget. It's your son that's wanted for murder, not me. Let's get on with it. All right. Lie down. Just be careful, Doc. Keep track of this pulse while I'm gone. You're not going any place. I'm going to the kitchen to get some hot water. I guess that's OK. I assure you that it is quite necessary. Go ahead. I'll be right behind you. That won't be necessary. The telephone is in this room. I can go nowhere. I can do nothing. OK. Go ahead. Father isn't going to do anything. He loves his son too much. Vic told me not to take any chances, and that's just what I'm going to do. Where is your father? He's been gone long enough to get ten basins of water. My father knows what he's doing. That's more than I think you do. I'll overlook that remark because you're needed here. But when this thing is finished, I'm... Oh, what's the use? Why don't you relax? Relax? Listen, you, I love that man, and I'm not taking any chances. Love. I don't think you know what love means. If you did, you wouldn't feel that way about a cheap gunman like Vic Brady. Cheap? Cheap? Take a look at this place, sweetheart. Does this stuff look cheap to you? There's not a cheap bone in his body. So where will it all end? What are you going to do in a couple of years when that pretty face is gone? I'll worry about that when the time comes. You'd better, because he won't. He doesn't strike me as the sweet and gentle type. Oh, he does get rough once in a while. I did leave him once. But you came back. On the first bus. Why? I told you. I'm in love with him. Take it or leave it. If I were you, I'd leave it. I had a hard time finding a basin. Be careful, Doc. I ought to kill him while I have the chance. That's dangerous talk, Doc. Remember your son's life. Yes, my... my son's life. Now, will you bring me some clean sheets? There. It is done. Thank goodness I couldn't have taken much more of that. You made his face look like raw meat. It will heal in very short order. The dye will change the color of his hair, and he will be an entirely different man. For the time, the healing is complete. Now, I suppose you'd like to carry out the balance of your orders? For instance? Kill us now that the surgery is finished? Nothing personal, Doc. It's Brady's orders. That isn't a very smart move. You know, infection can set in. And who would he go to if he didn't come to me? Well, my daughter and I are leaving now. He will awaken shortly. And when he does, I want you to be sure and tell him to come to my home in two weeks, at which time we will remove the bandages. I will leave this solution with you with which to bathe 
the bandages. You will merely follow instructions. You have my son, as you say. Our lips are sealed for the crime we have performed, as well as for his crimes. But someday you're going to get caught. Be sure and tell him to come to my home in two weeks. His life will depend on it. I, I don't know. Vic said... Young woman, you have no choice. Come, Marilyn. You know, it's too quiet around here. Even the commissioner's been off my neck for a whole week. I wonder where those two could have gone. Nowadays, people don't just simply fade from the earth without leaving some trace. Two weeks is a long time. Yeah, it's too long. I wonder where the doctor could have gone. His daughter said he's resting out of town. She said he'll be back today. Uh, I wonder if he found Don. I wonder if he's with him. You probably get some doubts about that good doctor. No, not the way you think. But I do feel the two weeks is too long. Maybe we better get out to the Gregor house. I'm for that. Inspector Johns. Well, speak of the devil. Uh, yes, Doctor. Yes, we've missed you of late. Tonight? Well, yes, yes, we can get out there, Doctor. All right, we'll see you later. <laughs> Sit down, Bob. We'll uh, get out to the Gregor house a little later. I wonder what the old boy wants. I don't like it. I tell you, that doctor's got something up his sleeve. You've got to go. I don't need you to tell me that. What could he have planned? He knows we have Don. He doesn't know Don's already at the bottom of the river. He'd be too afraid to try anything. But if he does, how could he or anyone else ever prove you were Vic Brady? He could say that he did the operation that destroyed Vic Brady. How could he prove it? Uh, well, maybe you're right. It's foolproof. Why, with a new face, nobody could ever tell I was Vic Brady. When these wrappings come off tonight, baby, we're gonna blow this town for good. South America, the foreign countries, where we'll live like kings. Anything you want, for the rest of our lives. I hope you made me a real nice face. The one I, I used to have, I, I got used to it. I liked it. He wouldn't dare mess up the job. I'd kill him and he knows it. Sure, honey, Betty did real good. I might even slip my grand or two if he did a good job. That won't be necessary. He'll have a different kind of fee this time. Yeah, sure. Come on, get dressed. It's about time to pay a call on the kindly old doctor. On time, Doc? You appear to be a man who is usually on time. You got it right, Doc. Let's get these Christmas wrappings off and see the presents you gave me. Keep your eye on them, honey. When do you uh, release Don? Don? Oh, yeah. Just as soon as we leave here. How sure can I be? Why, Doc, you got my word for it. Now, let's get with it. And, Doc, for your sake. I hope you made a good job. I know I made a good job. Marilyn, will you please get me the, the shears? Will you sit over here, please? You uh, soaked the bandages, as I told you? Of course. Well, then there should be nothing wrong. Oh, I see we have some other guests for this evening's unveiling. The cops! Take it easy, Brady. Brady. You got the wrong man, copper. I don't know any Brady. What are you up to now, Brady? Copper, you got a surprise coming. I don't know who you think I am, but the doc here will tell you I'm just another one of his patients. Who's behind those bandages, doctor? 
Yeah, Doc. What's behind these bandages? Show them. A doctor's duty sometimes must be shown in strange ways. First, he has a loyalty to his patients. Then he has his loyalty to the law. And still another, loyalty to his own family. I don't know who you police officers think this gentleman is, but he is my husband, a law-abiding citizen. I'll have you reported for this. We know one thing, no matter who he is, he's no gentleman. I've taken enough of these insults. Take these wrappings off, Doc. Did you bring the scissors, Marilyn? Here they are, Father. Thank you. Cut the gap, Doc, and get busy. Show these guys I'm not who they think I am. This man is not who you think he is. Be careful with those scissors, Doc. My face is still tender. And in need of a shave, too, I'll bet. See, Inspector, that is not Rick Brady, the man you expected. You're right, Doctor. It's not the man we expected. Uh, see, what did I tell you? Let anybody say they saw this face at the scene of any holdup. Come on, coppers, take a good look. See if you can identify me as Vic Brady. Well, then I take over here. Come in, Miss Willis. Can you identify this man? Yes, Inspector. That's the man that, that killed Matt. What are you, all crazy? Look at me again. The mirror, please. Perhaps you'd better uh, take a look yourself first. My son, the man who killed the police. No! Thank <laughs> you. 